So in this section, we want to talk a little bit about downstream keyers. The, the word key in video production basically means when you're taking part of one video image or graphic and overlaying it over the top of another graphic. It's just kind of a generic term that's been used in video production for a long time. A key is again superimposing part of one picture over another picture. The downstream part of that means that the graphic that we're applying is going to appear in front of the camera. Uh, so it's like you're overlaying someone's name, for example, or the title of the show uh, over the top of a video image so that you can identify the person that's talking. So to give you an example of what I mean here, let's say that we're going to take camera one and put it on program. So we have a shot of the host of our show and now we want to identify who she is. Using the downstream key buttons, I can actually superimpose her name over the screen like that so that um, you know it fills up the lower third part of the screen there to identify who the person is and basically what her qualifications are, her title or um, you know her email address or some information like that. Okay. So that's what a downstream key looks like. Now I want to show you how to actually go about setting that up. The first thing that we need to do is assign where, that down, where the graphic is coming from that's creating that downstream key effect. The TriCaster here actually has four of those downstream keyers. So I can bring one graphic onto the screen and then I can lay another element over the top of that, like that flame effect. Um, so you can actually have multiple graphic elements, up to four of them on the screen at the same time. That could be something like, say that you've created a logo for your show and you just want to keep that logo in the corner of the screen all the time. People sometimes call that a bug. You could have that on the screen all the time and then you could put in and take out elements like that, which are the names of your guests or the credits at the end of the show, that sort of thing. So that's why you have multiple layers of those graphic elements. Okay, to actually set up these things, I'm going to go to the screen over on the left hand side here. And when we do that, you can see that there are four boxes over here on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, they, it looks like kind of one section here, but here's a box, here's a box, here's a box, and here's a box. And these are for setting up the four downstream keyers. They're called DSK1, downstream key one. Downstream key two is the second box here downstream uh, key box right here, number three, and DSK4 here. Now the first thing we want to do is choose where the graphic is coming from. It could come from the character generator, that external computer that I mentioned earlier, or it could come from graphics one or graphics two, or it could come from a buffer. It can even be a camera if you want. But uh, this little menu at the top of this setup window is where we choose that. You can see that there's a little arrow there which indicates that it's a, a that there's a pop-up menu. And you can also see that it's currently assigned to GFX1, meaning that it's looking for a graphic in the graphics one bin. So I'm gonna come up here, pop up this little menu, and then I'm gonna come down to where it says media players and choose GFX2. So say that we're going to want to superimpose this graphic that's in the GFX2 bin here, this kind of lower third bar. We now have said as long as we select this, now that graphic is going to show in the little window here and it means that that's all set up to appear. Now you can actually see it on our preview monitor over there at the moment because I have GFX2 selected on preview as well. I'm going to choose camera 3 here for the moment and you'll see why in a second. Then. We want to choose how long it's going to take for this graphic to come on the screen and how we want it to come onto the screen. There's two ways you can make it come on. You can either push a take button or you can push an auto button. I can do that here on the computer screen by clicking the take button and it'll pop onto the screen and then click it again to make it go away. Or if I push the auto button, I can make it fade on or fade off like that. Okay, now right above that, I have a little pop-up menu where I can choose the speed of that fade. If I click on the arrow there, I can choose slow, medium, or fast. Slow is two seconds, medium is one second, and fast is 15 seconds or half a frame. I also can just put the mouse right over that, uh, that number, hold the mouse button down and drag it to the right or drag it to the left to increase or decrease that amount manually. So if I'm not happy with half a second, one second, or two seconds, I can customize it to be exactly what I, I want it to be. So for example, if I set it to like 115, that's gonna be about a second and a half for it to fade onto the screen instead of a second like we looked at earlier. Okay, 
So that's the, um, the way that you can take them on the screen automatically. So let me turn off a couple of contro other controls here. So I can push the, the auto button to fade it on like that or fade it off like that. So I'm going to select the graphic here, fade it on, fade it off like that. So it's taking a little bit longer to come on. Now on this same screen, there's also a positioner control, which is this little kind of diamond shaped button here. That allows me to move the graphic around the screen. So if I bring the graphic onto the screen before the show starts, like we did there, and I'm not happy with its position, I can click on the little uh, diamond shaped button here and it brings up a positioner tool. The positioner tool has uh, several different controls in it. One of them is position and that's the left and right or up and down position of the graphic. I also can zoom in and out to make the graphic bigger and I can rotate it. So if I come to the position controls here, the X value here is the left and right position. So if I drag the mouse pointer over that, I can move my graphic left or right. The Y is up and down. Or if I put the mouse pointer over the button here that says position, I can just click and hold the mouse button and then I can drag it around the screen wherever I want it to go. So obviously this is designed to be a lower third, so I can just put it, I'd put it at the bottom of the screen like that. I can also make it bigger or smaller using the zoom control. And I can uh, either increase its, its uh, size horizontally or vertically, or if I use the zoom button here, I can just make the whole thing bigger, and then I can go back and move it around. And I can even rotate it. The rotation actually has three different directions, so I can ro rotate it around the x-axis, which is like that, or I can rotate it around the y-axis, which is like that, or I can even rotate it around what's called the z-axis, which is more like an airplane propeller kind of rotation. So you can take the graphic you've created and put it anywhere on the screen, make it whatever size you want, uh, and even rotate it to different positions as you like with that positioner control. So again, I got to the positioner by clicking on that little, uh, the little diamond-shaped button right up there, and then I have all the controls right in here. If you get it adjusted and you're unhappy with the way it looks, you can always hit the reset button to put it back to its original size. That just resets all of these functions to the way they were. Okay, so we've chosen the source for our graphic. We've also um, chosen the speed at which we want it to come in or go off the screen. You can additionally bring the graphic onto the screen using any of the transitions that we looked at earlier. So if I click on this little button that shows the fade icon here, it'll bring up all of those different uh, transition uh, windows that we looked at earlier. So I can click one of these, for example. Now when I click the auto button, I can make it fly onto the screen or fly off of the screen instead of just fading on. So there's hundreds of different ways that you can make the graphic appear on the screen besides just a simple fade. And again, I can change that by clicking right on the little button there. This is a fade, and then you have all of these other methods of bringing the transition onto the screen instead of just a basic fade. And we already looked at how to change the speed here. Okay, so now we've got it all set up on the, the window here. I wanted to show you on the actual switcher controller how to bring those graphics in and out from the controls on the switcher as well. So coming back to the control surface here, um, all of the, the DSK buttons are just to the right of the fader handle that we were looking at previously. Uh, there, there are actually eight buttons here, which are in, in uh, four sets of two buttons each. The upper row here is DSK1. The row right below that is DSK2, DSK3, and DSK4. So I was just setting up DSK1 to uh, bring in that graphic that we were looking at there a second ago. The two buttons basically are just like the take and auto buttons we looked at a moment ago. If I hit the button on the left, DSK1 take, that graphic will pop onto the screen. If I hit it again, it'll pop off of the screen. The button on the right is like pushing the auto button. It'll make it fade on or use whatever fancy transition you used at whatever speed you chose. So again, the downstream key buttons here can be assigned using the on-screen controls over on that interface monitor on the left-hand screen, and then you can bring the graphics in and out as the production is going along through these buttons. Again, you have four different layers of graphics that you can bring onto the screen here. So I'm going to set it up so we can see a couple of those at once. If I go back to the, um, to the, the setup buttons over here in this window, I'm going to set up uh, DSK1 so we're bringing in 
this spinning basketball effect from buffer two. Okay, so there's our spinning basketball in buffer two. I'm gonna go to my setup menu here, and at the top, I'm gonna pop up the little menu, go down to where it says buffers here, and then choose buffer two. So now we see that little animated spinning basketball there. Now if I wanna see where that's gonna appear on the screen before the show starts, I can just hit my take button here, and that might not be where I want my graphic to appear, right in the middle of her face like that. So I'm going to click on the positioner tool at the top of that, and then I'm gonna use the zoom control to shrink that down a little smaller. And then I can use the positioner controls here to put it someplace else on the screen, maybe like that. Okay, and then say that I also wanna use this smoke effect that I added a moment ago here. I could go to DSK2 and change that from where it is now, buffer one, to buffer two. And we should see, whoops, sorry, wrong buffer there. So it's buffer number three. So I'll go to buffer number three. And now I can see the smoke effect being previewed there. And if I hit the take button before the show starts, you can see where that's positioned. If I don't want it right over her face like that, again, I can go to the positioner control for DSK2. And I could just move this over a little bit to the left so I could drag it over like that. So it's still now it's, uh, uh, on the screen, but it's to the left of where she is. Now, if I wanted to go all the way to the bottom, I might want to zoom in on that a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. And then I could move it down just a little bit with my position or control. Like so. So it's completely filling that left side of the screen. And now we've also got our lower third graphic that's on DSK4 here. We've got that coming from our exterior ca character generator. So that's gonna fill the bottom of the screen like that. Now one important issue about these downstream keyers is that they are in layers, meaning that downstream key four appears in front of three, two, and one. So DSK1 is at the f at, is at furthest back in, this, in the layer. So if I move our basketball uh, down to the bottom of the screen down here, you'll see that it actually goes behind our lower third graphic. And if I move it over here by the, the smoke column, it goes behind that. So that's the furthest back layer of the three that we have on screen right now. The smoke layer in DSK2 um, is behind that and DSK4 is in front. So I could have up to, up to four different elements on the screen at one time and I can bring them all in and out through those buttons that we are looking at on the switcher control. So if we come back to the control surface here for a moment, uh, I can use my downstream key buttons here to bring those on and off as I need to during the show. You'll notice that I have three buttons lit up here. I'm gonna just turn all those off for the moment. So now when I'm ready to bring in my basketball effect, that's on DSK1 up at the top here. So I can either hit the take button to make it pop on, or I can hit the auto button to make it fade on like that. And while that's on the screen, my, my lower third graphic is coming in on DSK4 down here on the bottom. So I can hit the auto button to fade that on, leaving the basketball on the screen as I take that one in and out. Now if she starts talking about the smoke effect, that's on DSK2, uh, so I can come up here and hit my button to bring that onto the screen as well. So the DSKs allow you to add all kinds of graphic elements to your program, whether they're coming from the character generator, whether they're coming from a buffer, whether they're coming from the graphics bin one or the gra graphics bin two. It's a great way to be, to be able to identify people on the screen, roll credits at the end of the show, show your opening title, or put in some kind of fancy logo or bug that's gonna add a little bit of extra pizzazz to your program.